All right guys, I'm out here on a very cold range and I wanted to address some questions that I frequently get about setting your rifle up for both suppressed and unsuppressed function. Uh, I get a lot of questions about adjustable gas blocks or bull carrier groups or buffer weights and springs uh, and what people need to maximize the performance of their rifle. Um, personally, I don't recommend or use adjustable gas blocks. Uh, if your gun's properly built and timed, I have never found that I need one, plus our barrels are, are tested extensively, both suppressed and unsuppressed, um, and we set our gas ports appropriately. They're not over-gassed. Um, so just how I set my rifle up, I recommend using a standard fixed gas block. Uh, I've had issues with adjustable gas blocks. There's tiny leaf springs and screws, and I've, I've noticed that they tend to fail, and I've tested dozens of different adjustable gas blocks. I just haven't found one that's as robust as I need. Um, on this rifle, I have a Badger Ordnance TDX gas block. It's an extremely low profile fixed gas block. Uh, it's also machined from steel, so it's very durable. Uh, I like that it's low profile in nature because it gives me plenty of clearance under my handguard, and also it gives plenty of offset for any components that I mount to my rifle. I'm not going to have any M-lock attachments or, you know, weapon lights or whatever it is making contact with the gas block, which would ultimately negate the benefits of having a free float barrel design. Uh, moving on back, the headspace, that's the foundation of any rifle. You need to have a nice tight headspace. Uh, when we produce our barrels in the factory, we hold tolerances that are well inside of SAMI specifications. We only afford a 3,000th tolerance gap with our barrels. Um, when we headspace a bolt to that barrel, we look for about a thousandth of clearance, and that will give you the most consistent seating depth and the most consistent chamber pressures. Both of those are really important, especially when you introduce a suppressor to that system and increase the amount of back pressure and gas flow. Uh, moving back from there, I look for a really nice tight gas ring seal between the bolt and the bolt carrier. That's really important to make sure the gases aren't blowing past the gas rings. It'll give you more consistent chamber pressures again. It'll give you uh, more consistent lock time. Uh, I recommend using a full weight mil spec bolt carrier group. Uh, this one's a BCM. We sell them on our website, either just the individual bolt or the complete bolt carrier group. But these bolt carriers are very high quality. Uh, they're full weight, so they're like 11 ounce plus bull carrier. Um, moving back from there, I use mil spec action springs. You can buy them for $4. I replace them every time I rebarrel my rifle. Um, and then moving back again, uh, I use full weight buffers, so the heaviest buffer that will cycle reliably in my rifle. Um, a lot of manufacturers send out their rifles with lightweight buffers, like an H buffer if you're lucky or maybe a carbine buffer. Uh, those are way too lightweight for this system, uh, especially with this mid-length system. Um, it doesn't have the appropriate weight behind your bolt carrier to keep your bolt forward and locked. And then again, when you add a suppressor to that whole system, uh, you're gonna have rapid movement, rapid extraction, uh, and it messes with the timing, that eight step cycle of operation of an AR-15. So let's see what this does. Um, again, if your gun's set up properly, you're not gonna have any issues when you throw on a suppressor. Um, let's see what this looks like shooting unsuppressed, and then we'll throw a suppressor on it. Pay close attention to the ejection pattern. Uh, what I look for is consistent four o'clock ejection when the gun is unsuppressed. When you add a suppressor, you're getting more gas flow. The bull carrier group tends to move a little bit faster. You're gonna see ejection move slightly forward, maybe. Uh, with my system, you're not gonna see much of a difference between suppressed and unsuppressed fire. All right, so let's throw a suppressor on it. This is a Surefire RC2 can. Uh, these are great, very durable, very common, um, but they do a good job at reducing the amount of back pressure that you get into your system.
All right, as you can see, there's no big difference between running suppressed or unsuppressed. The gun doesn't change between the two, uh, and it's set up for both accuracy and reliability. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We're always happy to answer any questions you might have.